Oh, you'd love to hear some secrets about ancient cities, don't you? Hi, I'm Marco. In this video, together with Puyan Gnambon, we will tell you about all the cool things that you can find in the deep dark. The deep dark is a biome that can be generated much like any other biome, but to increase the likelihood of finding it, uh, you should look for the tallest mountain that you can find uh, and dig as far as you can underneath it. I think the biggest challenge in introducing the deep dark was the actual placement of that biome. In the first experimental snapshots that we have released, there were always other biomes creeping underneath of it and it doesn't, didn't feel good. Deep dark should be always at the bottom of the world. What we've done instead was to place the deep dark under the world, uh, under the bedrock layer, that's where the center of it is. What you see in your world when you go to the deep dark is just the tip of the iceberg. Inspiration-wise, we drew a lot from like Lovecraftian horror, because uh, we wanted to, to implement and, and develop something that was quite scary, but not in the traditional horror sense, scary as in like jump scares and that, but more of a more of a mysterious and unknown scary, I guess you could say. My favorite feature of the deep dark, I would say, uh, is the skulk patches uh, that are scattered around the deep dark. Uh, mostly because I feel they, they give off a very organic vibe and add to the mysterious feeling uh, inside of the biome. In my head, the skulk blocks are like organs of some living entity. So we have the skulk catalyst, which is a stomach, which allows it to digest souls and create a skulk charge. This charge will move around, uh, replacing blocks with skulk if the charge likes the block, otherwise it will just wrap them with skulk veins. This charge can also place skulk sensors and skulk catalyst. The sensor are the hearing organ of the skulk, as they allow it to detect what's going on around it, Whereas the Skulk Shrieker allows it, when alerted by sensor, to spawn the Mighty Warden, which allows the Skulk to defend itself. With the Skulk sensor, we needed a way for blocks and entities to detect what was happening around them. Once we got this system right, it was a matter of tackling all the edge cases, like what happens if the source of a sound disappears between before that sound is able to reach its destination? What about wool? Like wool dampens vibration, so it should obstruct these vibrations. Once we got all of this right, we ended up using this system in many other different features, like allays use this to detect note blocks, the word then uses this to detect the player, and even the Skull Catalyst uses this system to detect mob dying next to it. The Deep Dark is very silent because it's uh, filled with sensors and shriekers, and you want that biome experience to be for, for the players to sneak around and be really quiet. And if you would have other mobs that just move us around, they'll just be triggering all the sensors and uh, alerting the warden, and that's not fun. We wanted the deep dark to be creepy without the creepers. So next time you go to the deep dark, maybe instead of taking a stack of torches, because placing a torch will actually trigger the warden, maybe take night vision potions instead. Just a, just a tip. Yeah, warden is so strong, yet you don't get much back for fighting it. And that was very much intentional. You need more than a stack of hours to pin it down and it can one-shot you, it can shoot you through walls if, you, if you're trying to avoid it. And that's the part of the design. We wanted basically to send a clear message that that's not a mob that you want to fight. It's a mob that you want to avoid. Uh, Warden is a mob that will only spawn by you triggering it. And if you leave it be, it'll just disappear. And that's fine. The Skulk and the Warden fit into the Deep Dark concept as some, ki some kind of living entity that found itself buried underground. The reason why the Skulk and the Deep Dark are often found within ancient cities is a mystery that we are excited for our players to figure out. Do ancient cities hold some sort of a secret? Yes, they do. For the first time ever, we have included a redstone rooms with redstone contraptions for players to observe and uh, learn from them. They are located in the bases of the ancient city centers and you can bust your way in, but all of them have a secret way to get in without breaking anything. And it was so fun to actually figure that out. 
Have fun in the deep dark, but stay safe. <laughs>